I want you to think back to a time when you were young, let's say elementary school or middle school. Did you ever have a teacher show you something and just ask this question? What do you notice? Or what do you wonder? Kathy Dixon here with the Math Reflective, where we think deeply about math, how we teach, and how we might increase or maximize our students and own professional potential. Today I'm going to talk to you about instructional routines, specifically the instructional routine called Notice and Wonder. So today I'm going to cover what is it, what does it look like in a classroom, show you an example of doing it with my students, and then talk about different benefits of using the Notice and Wonder instructional routine. Thanks for joining me. in any classroom and any content area. But I'm going to talk specifically about using it in math. I think for most students, solving word problems, or as some like to call it, real world situations, pose a challenge to them. These are the most difficult problems for them to do. And they often just right away either take the numbers and kind of guess at an operation to do with them, or some students shut down and just feel like, I don't know how to solve these, or I'm not very good at these. So using the notice and wonder instructional routine can remove some of these obstacles. What I love about these types of problems, everyone has access to the problem and everyone could think of some kind of answer because we're not always looking for something mathematical that they notice or that they wonder. I'm gonna show you a short clip now from a video of a recent lesson in our sixth grade math class this week. It is from Unit 6 on Expressions and Equation in Open Up Resources 6-8 Math, and this is the start to Lesson 3. So this would be the invitation to the math. In this lesson, we are teaching students about something called balance hangers to show equivalency with equations. So we're going to show them a pair of socks hanging from a hanger, and it's, it's uneven. One side looks drooped compared to the other. So we're going to get them to start thinking about what an equation might be when it's not balanced or how we have to keep equations in balance. But this open-ended activity allows all students to have a response. Go ahead and take a look. We are starting a notice and wonder today for our invitation to the math. So no iPads are open, all right? We're just gonna give you about 30 seconds to study this picture and think about what you notice and what you wonder and I'll record your responses. So go ahead and take 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, and then we'll do a wonder. Oh, what do you know, notice or wonder? Um, there's two blue socks and two red socks. Okay, uh, two blue socks and two red socks. So is that, a, is that a notice or is that a wonder? You notice that the hangers are crooked. Okay. Uh, I love the crooked. Or what do you wonder? Uh, that the two red socks have to be the same, um, like the same weight, and the two blue socks are different weight. Okay, why do you think that? Because the blue socks, one's weighing them down, so it's uneven. Okay, so you're saying the red socks have to be the same weight because they're even. even because I'm gonna write even. I'm gonna kind of take shorthand notes here. And you said the blue socks are not the same weight mm -hmm. because one is, how did you say that? Heavier. One is heavier. So blue socks are uneven, one is heavier. Anybody else, something you notice? Something you notice? The blue sock on the right is smaller than, smaller than the one on the left, but it's weighing it down more. So the one on the right is smaller? No, the left. The one on the left you think is smaller. How do you mean smaller? Like the shape? The size. The size? Because this one looks a little more stretched out. Is that why? Uh, like stretched out? I don't know. What do you think? Like, do you mean this one's wider and this one's thinner? Yeah. Okay, so the blue socks are 
the blue right sock is wider. But then you also are confirming that this one is probably heavier. Is that what you said? Okay. Anything else that you wonder or notice? Oh, wait. I wonder why the smaller sock is weighing down the bigger sock. Okay. Why is, you're talking about the blue? Yeah. How about the left blue sock is weighing down the other? Okay. Anything else that you wonder? Anything else that you notice? Okay, we're going to go into our next activity. So how do you do a notice and wonder? Well, the first thing you do is you either display a problem or part of a problem, or maybe even just perhaps a picture on the board for students to see. And then you ask them to take some time, 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, however you want to do it. Ask them to think about what they notice and what they wonder. You could have students write their ideas down. You could have them just brainstorm in their head. But there's definitely quiet time and think time where the teacher's allowing students to think about prior knowledge or any kind of observations that they could make given the prompt. Next, after you feel you've waited the appropriate amount of time, you want to ask students to participate. You might even want them to pair up, do like a think pair share, have them talk to a partner first, and they can kind of share just one on one, which is a little less intimidating with what things they noticed or what things they wondered. Because sometimes students that don't really have an idea can get an idea from a partner. Then when it comes to the whole group share time, they have something to say. So what I usually do is write them on the board. Ask students, tell me what they notice or what they wonder. I will ask clarifying questions so that I understand and show them that I, they're communicating clearly. What's really important about Notice and Wonder is that you are praising and validating and valuing every student's response. After you write all the student responses on the board, the teacher can then summarize or just kind of name again a few of the things that you notice what that students were saying. And then you would build that bridge to the next step. Either you would go on to another activity and this was just to get their brains working and maybe perhaps notice some things that are going to come up in the next part of the lesson, or you would continue to give them more information about the word problem if you gave them a word problem. It's very open-ended and I can see how it would work in science or in social studies. Maybe you're showing a map. Uh, maybe in literature you're showing just part of a story and asking what they notice or wonder about a story. I would think it's very applicable in the arts as well. I could see someone showing a painting or a sculpture or a ceramic and asking students what they notice and wonder. Or perhaps in music class, listening to a piece of music, what do you notice and what do you wonder? Really the possibilities are endless. Perhaps the greatest benefit is that this creates an environment that is safe for students to share their thoughts without the pressure of feeling like they have to have an exact answer and that everyone's ideas are valued because no matter what you say, it would be something that you notice and wonder. Another way to do this, I notice and I wonder, would be to give a mathematical pro problem in context, like a word problem, but leave off the question. Don't write what we're going to have to find out and have students come up with that and create that on their own. Given these numbers, given this context, what questions could we ask in this problem? That's definitely an inquiry based approach rather than just telling students this is what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn about equations and what makes an equa equation true, what a solution is, what a variable is. Leaving off a question increases participation for all students because there is no wrong question or wrong thing to notice and wonder. So this could be very effective. So have you used notice and wonder in your classroom? In what content area do you teach in? I'd love to hear more. Please press like if you found this video helpful for you and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And upcoming, I will have some more instructional routine videos. Go ahead and check out the video below here about the true and false instructional routine and you can subscribe in the link to my channel right here. As always, thank you so much for joining me on my journey as a new vlogger and a mathematician. And follow me on Twitter at MathReflective or on Instagram at TheMathReflective. Until next time, are you ready for more?